Do you want the best tips and tricks from a photographer that specializes in gothic alternative photography? Then here's the video for you. Hello spooky bats and welcome back to my YouTube channel or if you're new here, hi and welcome, my name is Orphia and I'm a god girl from Belgium. Now, except for making YouTube videos and actually working as an administrative job in a video production company, I'm also a photographer and I have actually been active in photography for over 10 years. And for me this actually started when I was in school, when I was having actual photography classes, when I studied graphic design. Photography has, from day one that I started doing it, always been a passion. I took pictures at concerts, eventually also started taking pictures for a magazine in which I did my internship and I kept on doing that for the entirety of my studies, up to the moment that I actually started working and that's when my photography fell onto a back burner. Now of course I always was taking pictures of myself and this was actually very good practice. However, today I actually want to focus on some of you who want to do photo shoots with friends of theirs and who want to know what are the best tips and tricks that I can give you to improve the quality of your pictures. Now the first thing I want to talk about is the concept of your photo shoot. The concept of your shoot is so important but often neglected. If you don't know which direction you want to go, how do you expect to take the pictures that you want to take? I always recommend having a mood board and knowing what type of location will fit the mood board and also of course what type of outfits and styling are required to achieve certain looks because for me location and styling so the outfit the makeup etc actually go hand in hand when I personally work on photo shoots the combination of those two elements is what makes or breaks an image if I shoot a futuristic look in a church it might look very odd whereas if I have a super modern looking building that might actually work really well and also the opposite way if I want to shoot a more classic look, I might look into churches, into old buildings, into nice nature scenes. Now I'm not saying that you can't combine elements that classically don't go together, but I want you just to know that you should think about the full concept before you actually start taking pictures. And also if need be, just take extra outfits if you're not sure. So if you have a model that for example has two outfits and you're going to shoot somewhere and all of a sudden you see that there's quite some moss against the buildings, so you have some green elements coming out or you have a red brick wall, then you might decide that they could wear the green outfit so it matches more, or the red outfit so it actually complements the background that you're working with. Now of course for studio shoots where you are using a plain black or plain white or gray background, this is not as much an issue, but that's also not the type of shoots that I'm talking about today. The shoots I'm talking about today are not specifically studio shoots because that takes away a lot of the elements that I usually require in a shoot or love to have in a shoot, but I prefer talking about outside based shoots because those are more accessible to anyone because if you go walk outside you have a street you have a park you have certain buildings that you have access to so that can always work for taking really pretty pictures Another thing that I want to accentuate that if you are taking pictures for social media versus taking pictures for publication your camera does not matter. If you take pictures for social media and even for websites, most of the times if you have a decent phone, the back camera of your phone will be way better quality than you think it is and you don't need to invest in a specific camera to take pictures. If you have a camera, chances are if it's an older model that your current phone camera is actually better than that camera. So don't forget to first have a look at what you have and just use what you have. It's not worth investing in a camera if you're not sure if you're gonna use it often. Now I personally have two cameras. I have the Canon M50 that I am recording on right now and I also have a older Nikon model which is the D5200 which is my go-to camera if I go to concerts etc. But you don't need to invest in a camera. Most of the time using the back camera of your phone is quality enough. Up next, the timing of your photo shoot. 
I personally would not recommend ever shooting at noon, shooting at lunchtime. So from 11 to 1 or even to 2 are the no-go hours for me for photo shoots most of the time. There are a few exceptions to this and this is places where there's a lot of trees that can actually cover the sun and make that if the sun shines really bright, you don't have it so much in your pictures. Usually if I do photo shoots when the weather is nice, so when the sun is actually shining, I would prefer doing it in the morning. You all know about the golden hour term. This actually translates to pictures really well. So either in the morning up to 8, 9, 10 is about the time that I prefer doing photo shoots and then in the evening after 4. Now this also depends on when the sun rises, when the sun goes down. So have a look at your local time when the sun comes up, when the sun goes down and calculate about 2 hour space from the sun going up to the limits or where you need to stop taking pictures and also from the starting point two hours back is when the sun should go down because otherwise you might not have enough time to take pictures. Now I also want to talk about using shade and light to your advantage. Some people prefer to take pictures with the sun facing the face of the model. I personally barely ever do this still. Why? Because first of all, it's not super comfortable for the model and they will squint their eyes and you don't want that look on pictures. It doesn't look very good. So if I work with sun directly facing my model, I will either ask them to look down or to have their eyes closed while posing because this looks much better. Or what I personally most of the time do is I turn around the model. So it's the light comes from the back of the model that they have this nice glare behind them if you have direct light on them at least and that actually the face will not look overlit they will be way more comfortable posing and the pictures will look a lot better. I also actively look for shade when doing photo shoots because overlit pictures are a mess to edit whereas if you have pictures that are a little bit underlit you can always pull up those values. Of course if you can shoot in camera raw format you will need a camera for this you can even do more with your pictures than you would with JPEG files. However, if you have JPEGs, you can already do a lot of things. So for me, the most important element whenever I get to a location is to look where the light comes from and how I want to pose my model. And of course, for locations, I want to give a few tips and tricks. Locations that I personally really enjoy using are forests or like parks around me. And most of the time you won't notice it's a park on pictures. People will just see trees and pretty landscapes, etc. There's also castles. Most castles here in Belgium have gardens around it that are easily or freely accessible so you can always do your photo shoots there. Graveyards. I know this is a very much God cliche, but I personally really enjoy the aesthetics of most graveyards that are a little bit older. I don't like the looks of modern graveyards because it's just too tight and too clean and too, I don't know, it's not my vibe, but old cemeteries, old graveyards, I personally really enjoy doing photo shoots at. And then of course, abandoned buildings that are safely accessible. And I want to really stress this, don't go inside buildings that are not accessible. Don't go into dangerous situations just to take a pretty picture. There are a few places where I have done photo shoots where the walls on the outside actually look kind of destroyed but it's actually an old school building. It's actually the school playground where we took pictures. No one would be able to tell this. They would just see that it's an old abandoned building from the outside but that's about it. So when you take pictures I will always take more pictures than I actually need because I feel if you take more pictures so I take pictures often in bursts if I want to capture movement because sometimes people will have their eyes closed people will not know when you are exactly taking the picture unless you tell them. So when you are taking pictures with friends communication is key and also show them the pictures because if you let your friends see the pictures they can see what they want to adjust how they want the picture to look like and also for your yourself it's better to have their feedback. If they for example I personally never like when my ears poke through my hair. So whenever I do a photo shoot and I see that my ear pokes through my hair I will see it on the pictures. I will just pull my hair over my ear again and you will not see it in pictures. Those are small things that if you do them on the spot it will require less editing to fix these things because that's what I personally aim for is to have a as good as possible picture straight out of the camera. Now finally I want to talk about editing just a little bit. I personally edit my pictures in either Lightroom or Photoshop depending of the aim of the pictures, whether they are just 
fashion pictures or fantasy pictures. Now I do a combination of photo shoots that are more realistic looking, so that are just people posing outside in nature and those I only edit in Lightroom. However, the neon shoots that I do and the fantasy shoots that I do, I add additional elements afterwards in Photoshop. Now the main thing that I want to tell you is that if you have pictures that are too dark, you can always pull up the values in Lightroom. So you can augment the exposure, you can augment the values that you specifically want. However, I would never recommend just augmenting the exposure. I will always go into the highlights, into the whites, into the shadows and into the blacks. Now a tip I want to share with you because it's something that really changed the way that I edit my pictures is if you have a picture that is a little bit darker. So you are losing details of the outfit because you're taking pictures black on black what I would recommend doing is to make the shadows slightly lighter and the blacks slightly darker. That way you pull out the shadows, so you pull away some of the loss of depth that you have. However, by reducing the blacks a little bit again, you will make your picture actually look black still, but you will have more appearance of dark areas in your picture without losing too much of the details of the outfit, etc. I have been considering starting an additional channel about my photography, giving you behind the scenes of photo shoots, etc. But I'm also considering just doing it on this channel because it actually relates to the God scene. Most of the photo shoots I do are alternative or God photo shoots are related to it. And I'm not sure what you guys want. So I want your input on this. If you enjoyed this video, let me know. Let me know in a comment what you want to see more of if I do photo shoot related videos or photography related videos. What are your interests? What do you like and what do you not want to see? Also, if you don't want to see any videos like these anymore on my channel, let me know. So if you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate if you give this video a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel because I make weekly videos and I would love to have you for every single one of them. Before I end this video, I of course want to thank my patrons and more specifically my high tier patrons Anders, Jerry and Jen. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. It means the world to me. And of course, to each and every one of you, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week with a new video. Bye.